Let's talk about the sample and hold function this time. It's a really useful part of the matrix, but the manual doesn't go into it in any great detail. Before we start, let's look at a couple basic things in the matrix that will make this a little easier to understand. The first thing that you likely start playing around with when you learn the matrix is to take an oscillator, look at the frequency input to that, put X that tracks the fingerboard there, and just take the outputs with the standard pressure Z function to the outs, and you get yourself a basic sine-like wave. But you don't have to use X as a frequency input. You can use a constant. Remember, the oscillator frequency is in kilohertz. So what I can do is put a constant, let's say 0.44, which would be 440 hertz. That'll be our standard A in 440 tuning. And now, when I press the fingerboard, no matter where I press, the only value that I've set is 0.44, so that A is going to come out. Now that's a positive value. What happens if I use a negative 0.44 that I can easily do by putting that on the minus line? Same thing. So there's the first thing to understand. A positive or a negative frequency in kilohertz is going to come out sounding the same. The next thing, of course, is if I send nothing in, if I take that as a zero, my frequency will be zero, and obviously I won't hear anything. If I take it down to, say, 0 0.001, 1 hertz, when you do that, you can only see it in the matrix when you put your cursor over it. I don't hear anything either, or a little popping, because the ear can't hear 1 hertz. Even if I make it 0 0.01, 10 hertz, that still, at least my ears can't hear it. If I bring that up to... 0.02, 20 hertz. Now, I can kind of hear a little shuddering. It might not actually be a tone yet, but I can hear that rumbling is starting. And of course, if I take it to something like 50 hertz, then I can start hearing a tone. Why am I going through this? Because when I start using sample and hold, if I don't scale things properly, I might get negative values coming out. I might also get a number of values in a range that I can't hear. And if I'm trying to trigger notes at a constant rate, but the frequency I'm triggering is out of the range of hearing, you'll hear it as silence in the pattern, which might actually be nice if it's random, because then you can get a random sequence of notes with rests. Now we're ready to create a simple sample and hold. To do that, I need to use a shape generator. So let's create a simple shape generator that will trigger three times a second, and for right now, we'll trigger it on the gate W. Then what I'll want to do is create a formula and use shape generator number one, and instead of a normal shape of ramp up, ramp down, pulse, sign, I'm going to use one of these two options, either triggering the sample and hold of a matrix row or triggering sample and hold of a formula. Let's start with triggering sample and hold of a matrix row. Now the most common use of sample and hold is to apply it to noise. So every so often I'm going to take a little sample, a little snapshot of the noise, and I'm going to use that as a value to do something. Or possibly I'll scale it first. To start out, we'll just use the raw value. So I'll take my formula A and I'm going to use sample and hold on a matrix row and I'm going to put that on the noise row because I want to sample and hold noise. I'm also going to stick it in the frequency column of the oscillator so the value that is sampled is going to be used as a frequency for that oscillator. All I need to do is make sure that value is scaled to a frequency that makes sense for the oscillator. And to do that, 
I use my scaling function on W. 1 would be 1 kilohertz. So the sample and hold function, if I do nothing else to it, is going to create values between minus 1 and plus 1. It actually seems if you set the scaling to 1 and you apply sampling and hold to noise, the values that come out are minus 0.99992 plus 0.9999. Let's turn on our formula display. I've triggered this sample and hold three times a second on my shape generator. That will trigger when I gate the fingerboard. It's used as a frequency that will be applied to the oscillator that will come out when I press. Take a look at the display. You'll see values coming out. In fact, let's do this once a second so you can see it better. Minus or plus in my minus 1 to plus 1 range. And you can see the values are coming out randomly once a second. Now these values are random numbers, so you can't predict what pitch it's going to be. It can be any pitch in that range. It's possible that two numbers are repeated after each other, just randomly, and it's possible that some of these values will be so low we can't hear them. So if I bump it up to three times a second again, you'll hear notes being rat-a-tat-tatted out, and every once in a while you'll hear a silence that your ear will interpret as a rest. That's a basic sample and hold, but it's not really that useful because it's not that musical. What we really want to do is try and scale this so that you can hear distinct pitches coming out in some scale system that makes sense to you. How do we do that? Well, one way is to use an absolute multiply function. Now, all my values are going to come out positive. Let's see what that sounds like if we look at our little display. They're still random pitches, though. You can't really hear them in the context of a scale or some limited pitch set that maybe musically will be more useful to you. So let's try something else. Instead of absolute multiply, let's quantize it. We'll quantize it to 0.25. Now what this means is in my range of 0 to 1, I'm only going to have a few values. 0, which you won't hear. 0.25, which will be 250 hertz. 0.5, which will be 500 hertz. 0.75, 750 hertz. And as we said, we never quite get to 1. So let's see what this is like and look at our display. Now, it may not be in tune to A equals 440, but you're going to get values that are multiples of each other, and it's going to sound like an octave and or a fifth coming out. And if I take this one to a little bit above one, now I should get the one coming out because it'll quantize to one. you can hear some of those ones coming out. That's much more useful, but still rather limiting. How can I maybe make that a little more musically useful for myself? Well, let's quantize not to a constant. Let's quantize to a formula, and maybe that formula B, I'll set that up to only go to, say, 0.1. So now I'm going to have a lot more quantized multiples, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 coming out, and I'll get sounds that will come out much more related to a harmonic series. Let's see what that sounds like. Go back to our A, and instead of quantizing to 0.25, we're going to quantize to formula B.
And if I make it a little faster, let's say five times a second. It's getting a lot more musical. Now it's still based on a random series, so you could get two or three of the same thing in sequence, or you could get four or five or six pitches without any repeating. And then something else we could do is maybe let's take another shape generator. We'll just keep that one constantly going. When you place a one in the trigger column, that shape generator starts right away. And when you trigger something else with a gate, you may not always come back to the same place in that shape generator because it's constantly going. So a one can be very useful as a trigger when you don't want to always start a shape generator in the same place. Now, so I have a shape generator here. What I can do is maybe uh, use another formula on that C. I'll use shape generator 2 for that. And maybe I'll set that to a triangle-like shape. And I'll set that to maybe go about here. Let's use that on the spectral content of this oscillator, formula C. Will give me a nice change in sound because I'm using a pretty fast shape generator that's triggering this triangle waveform to control the spectral balance. And maybe the last thing I can do on this one is to go in, create a barrel, equals speed, and what I can then do is create another formula, D. We'll set that to the barrel. We'll set that maybe to go from 0 to 10, and I'll set that instead of this constant speed on my triggering for the sample and hold, I'll set a formula on that so now I can control the speed with a barrel. And I can then layer some other kind of speed control on top of that. And you can hear now, sample and hold can be really useful for generating random sets of pitches, but controlled through limiting using quantization and a specific range. Now when I sample and hold noise, I don't have to just apply it to pitch. I could apply it to anything in the matrix. You just have to realize it's going to generate values that are both negative and positive. So let's get rid of this function that we use to control the waveform of the oscillator, and we'll use sample and hold on that instead. Then we'll just use the normal x function to control pitch. We'll set the speed of that sample relatively high, and now let's see what happens. <laughs> The waveform is changing based on the quantized sample and hold rate that we generated, but it seems the sine tone sound is coming out more than any other waveform change. Why is that? Well, it turns out that if I apply negative value, say minus 0.5, for the spectral balance, it's not going to have any effect, minus 0.9. It's the same as if it was zero. You just have to know certain things about the matrix. And because sample and hold generates as many negative values as positive in that random sequence, if you use that to control spectral balance, you're going to have 50% of the time a negative value coming out. And so most of your tones are going to wind up being heard as the sine tones with the other changes coming in when things are positive. If I wanted to, I could apply sample and hold of a row to any of the rows and whatever is going on there will be sample and held, and I can use those values in the same way I did on noise. But let's take a look at the other option, sample and hold of a formula. Instead of sampling hold a matrix row, we'll sample and hold a formula. So let's create the formula that we want to sample and hold, 
and often you'll sample and hold a shape generator in and of itself. So let's create another shape generator for L. L we will apply to shape generator 3. We'll set that up to 1 for now. On shape generator 3, we'll set a value. We'll make it relatively slow, 0.5. We'll trigger that on W and go back to formula L. Because we want to apply this to pitch, I don't want to apply it on the noise row. I'll apply that directly to pitch now. And what I'm going to do is set this to sample and hold a formula L, which is going to be set to a triangle wave. We'll set that to triangle. And maybe we'll offset that with a little bit of value so we don't try and sample and hold zero. Now, let's see what happens. We go back to our formula and we'll take the quantization off. We still have a speed applying to the shape generator for that formula. <laughs> It's going up and down. Let's increase that speed. Obviously, when it's faster, you'll hear that triangle wave come out because you're sampling at a faster rate. You can hear it going up and down. If I sample really slow, every once in a while, I'll sample that triangle wave, and we might be on a high point, we might be on a low point, but we're sampling so slowly. It sounds a little more random. Obviously, if we sample faster, we can hear that triangle wave come out. Here we're sampling any old point that we just happen to be at in that triangle wave as we go up and down. But if we bring the quantization back, we'll now move around a fixed pitch set that we had before going up and down. <laughs> And if I wanted to, I could go in on the formula L, and I change that to some other thing. Maybe I'll just ramp up on it. I think you get the idea. The only thing that when you apply sample and hold to a formula, generally it will be more advantageous if you have something dynamic going on and not some constant value that you're just sample and holding. That gives you a basic idea of the sample and hold function, and I think if you play around with it, it's going to become very useful, and there are a number of presets that use this. And if you're interested, we can check my list of sample and hold presets. Let's see, there's Hal Dreams, Roller, Rosetta Alarm, and Splat. In the drones, they're used quite a bit. There's dual sign spray, juggler, cork in the bottle, mechano, submit job to mainframe, follow delay, harmonic skin, dual spectra voice, and funny voice. Sample and hold is often used, as you can see in some of these presets, to give a kind of a computerized, sampled, discrete kind of sound.